Whenever God gets you involved in what he's doing, you are the better for it. You're the one who's blessed. No one can honestly do anything for the Lord and be disadvantaged. No one. No one. Of course, sometimes people do things they do and they don't realize that they're doing, doing it to uh, maybe even to the devil. They don't realize. Let me explain that. Do you remember Paul telling us in 1 Corinthians? He said the sacrifice that the Gentiles sacrifice. He said, the sacrifice not to God, but to demons. First Corinthians chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Have you now seen it? Thank you. See, they don't know. But the word of God says they are not sacrificing to God but to devils. He says the sacrifice that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. But they don't know. We have to do God's things, God's ways. Amen. We have to do, tell somebody, we have to do God's things, God's ways. Amen. You know, when he talked to Moses on a mountain, he said to him, he showed him a vision of the tabernacle, and then he said to him, he said, see that you do it according to the pattern. There's a pattern. And God wants you to construct it according to the pattern. Whatever he tells you to do, he wants you to do it according to the word. Not according to your thinking. Do you remember two songs in the Bible? Two songs of Adam and Eve. The names of Cain and Abel. You remember them? All right. One day, Cain brought a sacrifice to God and it was rejected. He was a farmer. And so he brought of his crops to God as a sacrifice. And God turned it down. And then Abel brought the blood sacrifice blood of an animal and it was accepted and Cain was un he was unhappy about it he was offended and then God said to him if you do rightly you would be accepted he said even now sin lieth at the door now the same word that was used there for sin was used for sin offering. Some people have wondered why, what, what did God mean? He meant the sin offering is right there waiting. You see, God already said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Without the shedding of blood. Which indicates, when he said, when, when, when God said, sin light at the door, he was letting us know the kind of sacrifice that they brought to God. They were to bring to God a sin offering, a sacrifice for sins. And that offering didn't have anything to do with what you have only. You, it had to be a blood sacrifice because it was a sin offering. And Cain said, well, this is what I have. I have for my crops. So that's what I'm going to give to God. And he gave it to God and God said, no. Why? Because God's ways, God's things must be done God's ways. Amen. 
If it's a sin sacrifice, he has already said to us, it's blood. An animal would have to be slain. That's what he told them. And Abel brought one, and Cain brought something different. And God rejected it. Because his things must be done his ways. One of the time they were transporting the ark of God. And uh, when they transported the ark of God, David was the one who organized that transportation. And the whole of Israel sacrificed unto God. Great ceremony. They were all dancing and singing as the ark of God was being transported. They bought a new cart. And they put the, the ark of God in that new cart. And the fine horses were carrying the cart. And there were two men in the cart who were um, going with the ark. And they were there to see to it that the ark got to the right place, to its destination in the right way. It mustn't stumble, it mustn't fall, it must be well kept. And, and so they were doing that. And the people were dancing. And they were happy. But all the time, even though they were dancing, even though they were happy and rejoicing, God was not happy with them. Why? Because they did God's things their way. God already said, only the people carry the ark. And they'll have to carry it on their shoulders. On this side and on the other side. They carry actually over their shoulders, with their hands, but over their shoulders. That's what God said. No matter how costly that cart was, God was not impressed. Because they did God's things their way. And so what happened? When it got to a threshing floor and the, the, the horses stumbled, the ark of God shook and almost fell. And Uzzah, a man, one of the men who was uh, who were in the ark, uh, in the cart, tried to stop it from falling. Which was good because he didn't want the ark of God to fall. He tried to stop it from falling. And he was struck by the power of God. He died on the spot. And the Bible says, because he put his hand on the ark. David the king became afraid. He was so scared of God that day that he said, please don't bring the ark to the city again. He took off. He was so scared. He trembled in the presence of God. And then, all the time wondering, why did it happen? Why did it happen? Why did it happen? He went back and the prophets talked to him and he looked through the word of God. He found the reason. He found out they did God's things, man's ways. So he assembled the people again, several months later, and he said to them, You know that we did it the wrong way the first time. We didn't do it in the prescribed manner. For it is written that only the priests should carry the ark of God. Now he got the priests together and he said, You would bring the ark of God into the city of David. And then they were blessed. Tell somebody one more time. We can only do God's things, God's ways. Amen. All right. That's very important. Very, very important. You know, sometimes people do things and they wonder, but I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. So um, why, why wouldn't God accept it? It matters how you do what you do. There is a prescribed manner. Isaiah chapter 48. Now, we are, we're going to be giving towards the project. I am happy about this because we have an opportunity to stretch ourselves to act our faith for example when we teach on healing if there are no sick people that need 
healing, sometimes it is difficult at that moment to demonstrate the power of what you've just heard. Are you hearing me? If we preach on salvation and there are no people there who need to receive salvation, the word is unused at the moment. Because there are no people there to act their faith on the word that has come. Because um, what the message you preach is will impact the faith to receive the blessings of that message. Hallelujah. So, this time, I'm sharing this with you, and you're going to act your faith. And we have an opportunity to act our faith, and to act our faith big. Amen? To act our faith big. Oh, glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. You, you know it's not right to preach over people's heads. In other words, you just preach and, and did it. what you're saying has no reference to them. Sometimes people say, well, when the pastor was talking, he was just talking about me. Who else should he have been talking about? <laughs> Think about it. I should talk about you and to you. Then you apply it to yourself and you go work with it. What good will it be to you if you came in here and I talked a lot about the head of state and the former head of state and all the, the governors and I talked about uh, Togo and uh, Australia and I told you all the wonderful things that are happening there. And then at the end, I said to you, I believe you have been blessed. You may not know whether or not you have been blessed. Because it, it, it didn't concern you. But I have to bring to you the word of God that you can apply in your personal life. Something that you can use the rest of your life. One more time, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 18, no, 17, I begin with that. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, glory to God, when God starts talking, you better start listening. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. He said, I teach you to make profit. And I teach you, I lead you in the way that you should go. In the way that you should go. God knows what he has planned for your life. And he is a better leader than anybody else. He is a better teacher than anybody else. He say, now he teaches you and he leads you. He leads you in the way that you should go. He leads you in the way that you should go. Did you notice? He said, in the way that you should go. He knows where you should go. You probably don't know where you should go. But he knows. Here you're going this way, and God knows you should go that other way. Why? Because he knows the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done. He knows the future and your future is not a future to him. For he lives in eternity. He doesn't have a past. He doesn't have a future. He is the now God. Amen. And the Bible says all things are unveiled to him with whom we have to do. Praise God. All things. You talk about tomorrow, but God doesn't have tomorrow. You are the one that hasn't seen tomorrow. 
the Bible says to him things that be not as though they were He says, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. I am the one to teach you how to make profits. Are you there and you want to make profit in your life? He is the one teaching you to make profit. And you better listen to him. He's telling you, I am your partner. If you haven't made him your partner, you better start now. Now, I don't mean using his name in your company. You know, I deny limited. Jehovah Jireh and Co. <laughs> oh, you say Jehovah and Sons. All that. No, that's wonderful. I mean, you can use any name. There's nothing wrong with that. But that does not mean that he's your partner just because you're using his name on your paper. That doesn't make him your partner. To be partners, we have to have an agreement. I have to know my role and you have to know your role. Some of you are in the partnership and there's no agreement whatsoever. You are not in the partnership. You may soon find out. Because there's no agreement. What are the terms of the partnership? Well, but God has made himself our partner and he has told us what he would do. Praise God. And all we have to do is to recognize that partnership and enter into it by ourselves, by our faith, and have it working. He says, I am your God who teaches you to profit. And I lead you in the way that you should go. There are a lot of people who have gone in their own way. They haven't gone in the way that they should go. But God knows the way you should go. Amen. Hallelujah. He knows the way. Oh, I want to read the next verse. I, I, listen to this. Oh! I like it when God starts with oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'll go again. Verse 18. He says, Oh! The thou hadest hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river. And thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Oh, if you had only listened to me. That's what God is saying. If you had only listened. Oh. Your peace, he says, would have been as a river. And I, I told him in the first seven. Peace. Peace here comes from the Hebrew word shalom. And shalom does not mean peace quiet. Peace not talking. Come. No, shalom means well-being, a state of well-being, health, and prosperity. So he's saying your well-being, your health, and prosperity would have been as a river. Hallelujah. What a flow of God's power. If you had listened to me, I don't know if you've ever read in Genesis 26 chapter, and what talk, talks about Isaac, Isaac the son of Abraham. And uh, this dear son of promise, there was famine in the land. Do you know that economic problems are not new in the world? Are you aware of this? Economic hardships, economic problems are not new in the world. They've been there since the book of Genesis. They've been there a long time. So God is experienced, hallelujah, in dealing with economic problems. Because he's brought a lot of folks through that, hallelujah. Now Isaac faced such difficulties. There was a famine in the land. And the Bible says in the days of Abraham also, there was a famine in the land. But he brought him through. Now here is his son Isaac. And then everybody started going and packing, uprooting their families. And Where well, am I going to Egypt? Hey, what are you still waiting for? No, where, where are you going? I, I'm going to Egypt. What? The land of corn and wine. The land of prosperity. Everybody was joining away to the land of Egypt where there was prosperity. At least 
the, 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 the economy of Egypt. They said it's the best in the world. And at the time, it was the best. And Isaac's friends had moved. His neighbors had moved. They sold their houses and moved. Like some are doing today. And so, Isaac, he was about to, <laughs> to leave too. So his wife would better move. But no, a boy spoke out of heaven and said, Isaac, don't go to Egypt. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, don't go to Egypt. Don't go. God said, stay in the land that I will show you. And then the man was, so where is that? God said, stay here. In this land. Where there's famine? Yeah. Let those who are moving move. God said, stay here. The man thought, this dry place. Yeah. God said, so in this land. Oh, when God tells you to sow, remember, he owns the rain. He owns the soil. Hallelujah. He said to Isaac, sow in this land. The Bible says, Isaac, because God talked to him, sowed in that land. And in the same year, the same season, he received a hundredfold for his harvest. And God blessed him. He became a great, great man in the land of Gerah. Where God tells you to stay is where you should be. Don't move jobs just because that one promises something. Be careful. When you are born again, you are a covenant child. You are somebody supernatural. You are not an ordinary person. Uh-uh. You cease to operate in the economy of this world. The economic system is no longer your home. You work now with God. The trouble with many is they want God's blessings with the world's principles and they don't work together. We got a lot of Christians who want God's blessings with the world's principles. They want to work in the world's principles and get God's blessings. Or some of them want to marry them together and they just can't join together. It's like water and oil. You can put them together. It's like iron and clay. You can put them together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I like this. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as a waves of the sea. See that? If you had only listened. Now it's not too late to listen. He says, I am your God. And I teach you in the way you should go. I teach you the prophets. I teach you in the way you should go. The world has a system. But you are in the kingdom now. There's a difference. Don't let the world hold you back. Don't let the thoughts of this world's system hold you back. There's a man in the Bible we all know. It's amazing his name is not given and everybody has a name for him. Everybody has, uh, has a, a compound name for him. He is uh, brother P.S. The prodigal son. And P.S. one day went to his father. And he said, Daddy, give me my own inheritance. Can you see that in St. Luke's Gospel? Chapter 15. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 15. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your holy name forever. Hallelujah. Ah, glory. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He brought me out of the merry clay Set my feet on the rock to stay Put a song in my heart to sing It's a song of praise, a song of joy Hallelujah 
thank you, Lord Jesus. Ho, 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 glory. Yep. Are you there? It's in Luke's Gospel, 15th chapter, and I am reading from the 11th verse. And he said, hmm, who's talking? Jesus. It's written in red. Have you observed it? That's the man talking. Jesus, he says, a certain man had two sons. Notice he didn't say, and he speak a parable. Mm -mm. A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me. Give me my inheritance. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. There he wasted his substance with riotous living. In other words, his substance went from 100% whatever it was to zero. It wasted. That means it finished. It got to zero. Now his substance would have not wasted, but he's wasted. It got to zero. Every time it took out of it, it didn't grow back. Every time it took out of it, it reduced until it came to zero. He wasted his substance. That's what he's talking about. His substance went from whatever it was, 100%, to zero. I don't know where you are now. Is yours going to 40, 10, 10%, 5% or has it hit zero already? Or are you still in 100? If you're still in 100, something's wrong with you. It shouldn't be 100. Every time, it, every time you take out of it, it should increase. Don't come back with 100. Aren't you there? I know you thought 100 was wonderful. How could he give you, how could he give you 100,000 naira, for example, and three years later, you still have 100,000 naira? That's wrong. Come on, isn't that wrong? <laughs> you ought to come better up. All right, so, verse 13 again. In not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with rioters leaving. Oh, look at verse 14. This is most touching. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. When he had spent all, listen, he spent all Underline, spent all. Underline it. I'll come back to it. Let me read on. And he began to be in want. He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. Underline, no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, Thank God, thank God. Thank God he came to himself. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now look at it. This young man took his journey, carried his goods, his inheritance, and went to live a life of debauchery. Now look at him. The Bible says he spent all. How could he have spent all? He didn't give. When you give, you don't spend. What you have given, you haven't spent. What you spend, you have used in payments. He spent everything on himself. Some of you are looking at me right now. 
Sometimes you get something and you spend it all on yourself. You spend it on I, myself, and me. But you spent it. When you live that way, something happens in your life. And that's what happened to this man. Let's look at it. Verse 14, and when he had spent all, Bible says he spent all. He didn't give nobody nothing. He spent everything. He spent all that he had. He spent all. Everything his eyes saw, he bought. Until he had nothing else, and then he sold the possessions he had and continued to spend. Until he was awfully broke. Verse 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a famine. A mighty, Bible says, a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. He began. It started. Are you hearing this? He started to be in want. It was getting worse by the day. Every week he went from bad to worse. He began to be in want. And watch, it's going to get worse. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. The guy sent him, gave him a job, and he was to feed the swine and eat from among them. Touch him. Touch him. It's going to get worse. Watch it now. And he would fain have feared his belly with the husk that the, the son did eat. And, oh, look at the last part. This is, this is most touching. Read it, everybody. Read that. Again. And no man gave unto him. Why? Because he gave to no man. He spent everything he had. Now he's in want and nobody gives him anything. No man gave to him. But do you remember the words of Jesus? St. Luke's Gospel. This man lived the wrong life. St. Luke's Gospel. Chapter number 6. I want you to take this seriously. The Lord says he is your God who teaches you to profit. Now his word is here already. His word is teaching you now. <laughs> you listen to this, you make profit. Glory to God. Greater than you ever had in your life. Amen. Because the word of God is the wisdom of God. And if the wisdom of God is talking, you better listen. Verse 38. The words of Jesus. Give. And it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down. Now, when he says good measure, it means no cheating. I like this. Good measure. Have you ever been to the marketplace and, and, and sometimes they want to sell something for you and they fill the bottom of it with some wax? And you look at the, look at the, 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 the size of that can and you think, surely... This is good. But you don't know when you look in, it's not as deep as it was looking from the outside. That's not good measure. Sometimes we're being cheated. Not good measure. But this is good measure. Amen? Good measure. If we tell you it's a bag, it's a bag. That's what he's saying. All right? Not half bad for fool. Alright. So he says, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down. <laughs> pressed down. And then shaken together, so that all the little air pockets will be filled again. And then rolling over, shall angels give into your bosom. 
Look up now. Come on. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall angels give into your bosom. Angels. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it, it actually says, pastors give, and it shall be given unto pastors. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall the brethren give into the pastor's bosom. You know what it says? Oh, are you sure? Okay, let me read it again. Give! Nobody's name is there. This message is in two parts. To order for the complete package, log on to www.christembassyonlinestore.org. Everything.